Oh, well, I'm, I'm doing quite well. It's, uh, we've, we've adjusted very well to working from home and actually uh, I'm a little surprised at how productive my team has been to the point where um, we're not behind plan very much at all for the year, which is uh, quite surprising in some ways. Uh, and primarily what's driving us being behind plan is the fact that uh, Fed changed the interest rates down to zero, took them to zero. So that obviously affected any of our deposits. So, you know, it's been a really good year in that regard. Uh, in regard to, uh, I, I think probably the weakness for me is I have not reached out personally that much to people or friends. Uh, and so I've been somewhat isolated in that regard. Personally and professionally, I've been very engaged. But uh, I mean, when I say personally and professionally, I'm talking about both work as well as the community. I've been very engaged. Um, personally, I've probably need to reach out to a few of my friends and, and just connect a little more. So. I think it's making me better in some ways, a better leader in the sense that uh, I've always been good in person, Bill. I mean, that's my, that's my strength is in person. And so, um, you know, to, I've always hated using the phone as far as trying to get a point across. And so with all the zoom calls and with all the, um, um, you know, WebEx meetings that we've had and presentations that we've done, it's forced me to get out of that, my comfort zone a little bit and to expand uh, my own horizons, as well as my presentation skills online, as well as, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not on the front edge of technology all the time. And we've had massive changes in our technology at the bank in the last nine months, uh, just to COVID related. So uh, it's forcing me to get out of that comfort zone as well. You know, I, the first that has continued to pop into my mind uh, during this time is in Ephesians 6, where it talks about putting on the full armor of God and there's at the at, toward the end of that before it talks about the actual putting on the breastplate of righteousness, et cetera, et cetera. It has one line that where it says, "Having done all, stand firm." And so, you know, as I pray and as I think, you know, I, it really boils down to, Lord, have I done all that I can do? And if I have, then. All there is for me to do is to stand with that full armor on and can continue to stand until he, you know, comes through. And I think that's been, you know, I've not been the flashiest guy in the world. I've not been the best salesperson in the world all the time. But one thing that I, I do have that I believe is not only God given, but uh, that I've exercised is I persevere. And I think perseverance is, is a very key thing in the kingdom of God itself, but especially in difficult times. Um, and sometimes it's pushing through and sometimes it's standing firm. And right now I feel like there's nothing within my control. And so <laughs> I stand firm a lot these days, having done all I can do. Well, you know, part of it, uh, I, I, you know, because I do uh, chair a couple boards here in Orange County. One, we're in the middle of a capital campaign, the first ever capital campaign we've ever done. And so I thought, wow, what a, what a great year to kick off a capital campaign. <laughs> we just had our kickoff in February, and then, of course, March rolls around. And so it's the public phase of our campaign. And so it's tried to be innovative in ways to, and when I say innovative, I'm not talking about, you know, being manipulative. I'm talking about how, how do I ask for money? How do I express a need for an organization without pressuring people who are already being pressured and, and about every way possible? 
because many of the people uh, or companies that I talk to are already going through financial stress. And to ask for money um, has, is a little more challenging these days. And so, um, you know, they, that, that's, been, that's been a test. It's, uh, but I think there's been a way that I've been able to really empathize with the people that I'm dealing with and say, hey, if you can afford to give, give. And if you can't afford to give, then can you give your time and energy? Because we not only need money, but we need volunteers. We need people who can share our mission, vision, values. And um, so it's helped me to engage. And I think the main thing I learned a lot through all of this is to listen. Most of my calls, like I had a board meeting yesterday, and I have what's called the, the chairman's report on every one of my boards. And, and so I'm, when I'm chairing, I've been chairing this organization for about a year. Um, instead of me taking the time, ever since March, I've had the business leaders on the phone. I've asked certain ones to share or I've called on them during the meeting and just asked them to share what's going on in their business, what's going on in their life, et cetera. And I think listening has become much more key uh, during this time than, than talking. I believe so. I mean, you, you know, our prior to COVID, we had about a 10% adoption rate uh, among banks as far as technology. In other words, people engaging, uh, we had about a 10% growth year over year in technology growth, uh, people engaging techni technically as opposed to going into a banking center. Well, since COVID, that's shot up to 40 to 50% adoption rate. Uh, so I'm curious to see what those levels will be once we are allowed to engage in public again, number one. And number two, I mean, our branches have been open, many of them during this time, but uh, a lot more people are using uh, technology uh, at this time as well. So I think there'll be a good mix of that branches and, and the technology. I think, uh, you know, one of the things I've noticed is events in the past where some of us have gone to certain events and we've been able to engage in, in, in and I'll talk about specifically government events like, uh, uh, you know, usually go to Sacramento once a year or to DC to uh, lobby. And um, there's 15 or 20 of us that have gone in the past We've hosted those online and we've been able to connect with more of the representatives than we've ever been able to connect with. And our attendance was over a hundred. So we went from 10 people to 15 people to over a hundred people. So it, um, um, there are positives to the engagement, even though I, I know people are really tired of Zoom to a certain extent. Um, there's also been some um, just opportunities to uh, create special times. I, I serve on a board and, and you know, I, I, we had a virtual wine tasting. Now, I am not a, I don't drink, but, uh, you know, many people on the board enjoy wine and we had a, a person come in and talk about it. And I was amazed at how engaged everybody got. We had about 25 people on the call and how much conversation, and I scheduled an hour and a half for it and had to finally cut it off at the two hour mark. Uh, I couldn't get people to stop engaging. So, um, so that was more successful. And the reason I bring that up is because many times a lot of, uh, a lot of our clients are in other parts of the US and, and you know, we travel to them and um, so I think this is a, a good positive way to possibly engage them uh, in a way that's just as meaningful uh, as being there in person. Well, exactly. And, and you and I scheduled this conversation and my office is not that far from you, but I would have on my calendar, it would have been at least an hour to an hour and 20 minutes because of drive time, et cetera. And you're close to me, you know, picture a client that's in another part of Orange County. 
uh, for an hour meeting, I could be gone for two and a half hours. And so now it's an hour meeting. So I end up being more productive. Yeah.